Where's my damage? What caused it? How do I fix it? I first realized that something inside of me had broken in 2019, when my marriage suddenly fell apart after 18 years. And for the first time in a long time, I looked down at who I was as a person alone and saw that I was standing in my ruins. No clue when or how it happened. What does that mean? I didn't know who I was, but I knew it wasn't who I used to be. A brave, confident teenager was now a fearful and apprehensive adult. A child who never saw the hearing aids behind her ears as anything to hide had gradually become a woman who attached paralyzing shame to her disability. But I put on a facade of happiness for my children, even when the pandemic came along. That year of 2020, when most of you were in sweatpants, I put on real clothes and a full face of makeup every day, even though I had nowhere to go. And I ignored the voice in my head that said, hey girl, why do you do this? Are you becoming that person in the horror movies, messily applying lipstick with a scary smile and dead eyes? Where's my damage? What caused it? How do I fix it? I faked my way through that year of 2020. Then in early 21, I said, maybe if you write a book and you watch a character you create find and heal her damage, it'll help you find yours. Write a book. That'll fix you. You know what I did? I wrote a book in three months. I wrote a book and I fell in love with people who do not walk on this earth. And after 400 pages, I typed the end and I saw it happily for I'd done it. And I'd watched this woman find her damage and heal it. And I looked down, still ruined, nothing changed. Where's my damage? What caused it? How do I fix it? I expressed that sentiment really early on in that book, on page seven. It's like I'm a Xerox with a paper jam, and I'm blaring at an error code like J72, J72, but without the instruction manual, I don't know where to look for the little slip of torn paper that's throwing the whole machine out of whack. Even though I'd done it, giving myself this fake therapy, I was still flashing that error code. What's J72? Who has got my instruction manual? I faked my way through another year. Then, finally, about a year ago, I said, I'm near my breaking point. I'm gonna go to real therapy. Please, where is my instruction manual? It was a few months into weekly sessions during a discussion about my relationship with my disability that I mentioned in passing my internal dialogue when I mess up or find fault in myself is to say in my head, I hate myself. I don't remember when it began, but it had increasingly become my internal mantra over about the previous 15 years. Did I not hear what that person said? I hate myself. Did I mispronounce that word? Ugh, I hate myself. Did I forget to put the garbage out? Oh, I hate myself. I saw genuine concern on my therapist's face when I told her this, like she was troubled. I wasn't, what's the big deal? They're just meaningless internal words. Oh no, time out. You've wired your brain very poorly. We're gonna need to rewire it. <laughs> How adorable. Um, <laughs> Rewire a brain. We hear it, but whoever believes it. But I was paying for this therapy, and she had a diploma with the letters PSYD on them. So I humored her. She gave me homework. She said, every time I said in my head, I hate myself, I just stop whatever I was doing and say in my head 10 things I liked about myself. She said there was science behind it and to try it right there in front of her, out loud. Ew. <laughs> Reluctantly, I said, okay. I guess I think I'm funny. I couldn't think of a single other one. And I tried, and I, that's when I realized I really did hate myself. I cried. 
So the first day of this work, I have to stop and do this like 15 times. And it took me a while to come up with 10 things that could be true. Because I couldn't just be like, you're a hot supermodel who's dating Keanu Reeves. And it's making Joe Mangianiello extremely jealous. They had to be a bit believable. I couched everyone. I guess you're a good mom. Some might say that you write well. Well, by the second day I'd had it, I was frustrated having to constantly stop and compliment myself. I just started saying the same 10 things in a row without couching them, whether I believe them or not. You're a good mom. You write well. Boom, 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 boom. On the morning of the fourth day, I went to go and throw away some rotten blueberries. And I mistakenly tossed the blueberries into the recycling and the plastic container into the garbage. And I looked down at my mistake, and I waited for it, and it came. But this time, it came as a question. Don't you hate yourself? I was giving my brain time and permission to say, yes, I do. But my brain stood up for me, and it said, no, I don't. I was stunned. Those blueberries were my epiphany. Had I been gradually damaging myself all these years? Was something as seemingly harmless as my internal voice, the little slip of paper that was throwing the whole machine out of whack? Crap, was I J72? I went back to my book to see if this self-hatred showed up in it anywhere. And I found it on page 71. My self-hate growing by the moment. Maybe I'll write a book about a girl who hates herself, continues to hate herself, and then dies hating herself, never having written a second book. And then her house cats eat her. <laughs> I also found it on page 88. So twice in this book, oh, sorry, no. Um, very next page, page 89. 225, 280. 327, there was my damage in black and white. But why is this the story I'm telling you today? We hear so much about the power of words. But I think we tend to forget that our brains aren't just helping us make our words. Our brains are hearing our words too. And the words we tell ourselves can be just as powerful or damaging. We tend to look at our brains as like these cold, hard machines just puttering away in some closed-off room with operating systems we could never hope to understand, let alone modify, right? They're just telling our lungs to breathe and our eyes to blink and what's two plus two. But what I learned was this. My brain and yours is alive. It's dynamic. It's there for us to either partner with to make us stronger or to train to hurt us. And I trained mine to hurt me for a long time to destroy my self-esteem, to transfer self-hatred to my disability. And then one day I said, please stop. Please be on my side from now on. And it said, absolutely I will. Just give me three days. I want you to start protecting your brain from your internal voice. How? First, like me, change how you view your brain. I'm not the scientist. I'm the lab rat. But the scientists showed me that my internal voice changed my brain and that I could help change it back. And that lesson was so powerful, I became a student of the brain. I don't just want to know why I feel what I feel or why I choose what I choose. I want to know what does science say about what's happening up here? And what does science say about how I can hack it? I look at my brain as sort of this living partner, somewhat within my control. Start looking at your brain that way. Second, listen to how you talk to yourself. Pay attention to those bad memories you replay just so you can judge yourself and say, how embarrassing, or you're the worst, or you deserved it. Check how often you analyze your performance as a human being simply so you can find yourself lacking. I did it all the time, and then my self-hatred showed up in my book without me realizing it. So, on a very final edit of this book, I inserted a chapter, this one. 
I created a character who hated herself, and now I needed to show her that she has a really cool weapon in her battle for healing, her brain. It's there for anyone who reads it to say, maybe the next time I'm overly critical of myself, I'll try this. And that's why the third thing is, find your 10 things. Say them, trust your brain to hear them, and to want to protect you as much as you protect it. These three steps were just the first I learned in getting our brains on our sides, recruiting them into our battles for healing and happiness. It's not all it'll take. But my goodness, at the very least, we won't be inadvertently damaging one of our most important battlefront partners. And my self-hatred, I didn't create that. But my internal voice turned my brain into my foe and my battle for healing. And my internal voice changed it back into my ally. Since that blueberry day, I've not said that thing to myself one time. But what's more important, I haven't wanted to. Not when I mess up, not when I don't hear. I will not go home today and overanalyze my performance here. I will not put myself through any inspection that's designed to tear me down. In fact, I'm so concerned with how many times my brain has heard me say that terrible thing here. I'll be complimenting myself on the way home. I'm a hot supermodel. No, not that. <laughs> I'm a little offended you're laughing at that. No. <laughs> I have nice hair. I'm a good mom. I write well. I'm Virginia Montanez. I'm the author of Nothing Everything. And I was J72. Thank you. Thank you.